Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial on how to make a Discord bot with Java. So this episode's going to be doing your whole setup, uh, setting up your environment and this and that and you know understanding what we'll be using so you don't get confused along the way and hopefully that the tutorial is better. Straight up starting out you'll want to head over to jetbrains.com uh, link in the description so it's easier for you to just click on and you'll be able to come to this site where you'll just click download here and make sure you get the community edition which just download the exe if you're on um, if you're on Linux then head over to the Linux tab and download it from here same with Mac as well and just click download here and it will start downloading then you just go through with this. Start downloading that. And when it's finished downloading, run the executable, go through the entire tutorial, uh, yet yeah, the entire setup, and there you go. You can choose an option if you want to, and I recommend it, where um, if you right click, it will have a show as a show in project system. I'll show you a little example now. So if I head over to my IntelliJ projects folder, if I open up my current Discord bot here, if I right click, you'll see a open folder as IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition Project. I also have PyCharm, which is JetBrains' IDE for Python. It has a very similar look to IntelliJ, so I really like it. So you have that there, you can click it and it will open up in IntelliJ and it's very helpful. It just means you can get very quickly started on your project. So once that is done, you might get a screen that looks a bit like this. If not, then you'll possibly get straight into IntelliJ, but you should get a screen like this. Just go ahead and create a new project. This For this one, we're gonna be using Gradle. Um, make sure you do have your project SDK. If you don't have a project SDK, you'll want to go uh, and type Java SDK, and you'll be given the Java SE, oh, it's Java JDK. Well, Java SE development kit. You can download, uh, you'll want to download the x64 because you're not on a 32-bit device. x86 is 64 and 32 bits, but you probably want to go with the x64. You will want to go with the x64. Unless you are 32, but then of course go for that one. Uh, you have your Linux packages here as well, and your ARM packages, which will be for like Raspberry Pis and stuff. And then you have your Mac OS. So you go ahead and download that. It will want you to log in with Oracle, so you'll need to make an Oracle account, which, honest to God, I hate myself. I liked when you could just download it, but they changed the licensing, so yeah. And also, do make sure you do have Java installed as well, otherwise it's going to have a hissy fit. Once you've got your project SDK in, you'll want to, of course, locate it, and have it click New uh, SDK, and then come to your C program files, Java, JDK, and then all your JDK should be located there. So once that is done, uh, go Gradle, Java, and then click Next. And then you'll be brought to the new project with your group ID, artifact ID, and version. So your group ID is like me dot and then your name or com dot company. Uh, so yeah. So for this one, uh, you can change it up however you want. A lot of people don't do this. I do it because I do it. I learned it years ago. Probably isn't the good way to do it, but I learned it years ago. It doesn't really have an impact at all, but yeah. So for this, I'm gonna do me.yaskovic. I always sign all my projects with that first group ID. That's how I've always done every project with me.yaskovic. You can do lowercase if you want. I'm pretty sure you meant to do lowercase. You can do whatever. Um, you can do like com dot and then I don't know like Google, but you don't really want to do com dot Google. So just sign it as your uh, like a name that you have. So like your online nickname or your last name or something like that. So I've done Mito Yaswitch. Then your artifact ID is sort of like the name of the project, but not 
entirely, the, not like, not properly the name of the project, but it is at the same time. So we're going to do tutorial bot here. And then your version, uh, we're going to put 0.1. So then you'll be brought to this screen when you click next, which this is where you clarify your project name, project location. Don't worry about any of these at the bottom unless you really do know what you're doing, but I've never messed with it, so you don't have to. So project name, I'm gonna capitalize this here so I know, and it's gonna automatically put it into my directory with my um, IntelliJ projects. And there you go. Then once you've done that, you can click finish. And you'll be brought to the screen where everything's now getting applied. This can take a bit to all come together. It is quite an annoying process, but it's whatever, really. So while this is executing, you'll see all these things happening. And then after it's done, you'll see the uh, your, see your project sidebar come up. Um, you can name this whatever you want, you could just name it the project tab or sometimes I call it a hierarchy but it's not really a hierarchy at all. So well it could be, I don't really know, it's whatever. But yeah, this is your build menu here and this will help you out quite a bit. Well I say that because I don't know. All the build menu will do is it will tell you the process it's going through for building your jar or building all the files and stuff. So if you click this Gradle tab here, you'll see that it propped this thing up and it was quite out there. I always just cut it down to here so I can see all the tabs there, but it's not too much covering the programming area. You can minimize this a bit more here as well, use this thing here. Just make it smaller so you have more area of your coding. You can turn this a bit down there. So you'll see inside this that we have the tasks. We have like build and stuff. Now, we're not going to be using any of these. However, you can if you want to, if you do know what you're doing as well. If you know how to do a whole build.gradle thing well. I don't. So I use a thing called Shadow Jar which just, because you're going to add dependencies, you'll need the jar that you export to have all the dependencies in. Otherwise, it's not going to understand at all. And when you try to run the executable in like Windows or Java, uh, Java or Linux or Mac, it's not going to understand. It's going to throw an error. It won't know where your main class is and every other library you call, it will just say, I don't know. This isn't a class to me. So yeah, unless you do know how to, of course, do that with Gradle, uh, if you know how to add all that stuff, go ahead with it, that's fine. But if you don't, you're a bit like me, stick with Shadow Jar. That's what I learned on um, Stack Overflow, just use Shadow Jar. So there you have it. That is setting up your entire environment. So next episode, we'll be going over actually starting up the project, trying to structure the thing, um, setting up your packages, getting Shadow Jar built in so we have that in early, and actually quite possibly getting the body even up in the next episode. Yeah, we will do that next episode. In the upcoming episodes after that, we'll work on making like commands working with a better command system than just simply piping it through the events listener and we'll also be doing even more things like just generally cleaning up things and making things nice i, I said things a lot there i do that sorry about that <laughs> but yeah that's episode one thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode